Does love have an expiration date? Tetsuhiro is hurt to be around Suichi, as he is in love with him. He noticed Senpai as soon as he entered college. His looks won him over, but his character is a nightmare. Suichi is crazy and obsessed with his brother. Tetsuhiro himself did not understand how he could fall in love with someone like him. The news from America reached Japan. San Francisco has legalized same-sex marriage. Suichi was really pissed off by the news. He doesn't like gays. Tetsuhiro realized that his love would remain unrequited forever, but he couldn't do anything about his feelings. These feelings he has kept for five years. His friend considers him an angel. Suichi has been especially aggressive lately, since his younger brother ran away to America with boyfriend. The friend decided to give Tetsuhiro a gift. It was a bottle with a strange drink. The guy did not want to accept such a gift. His friend said that since Suichi didn't stop contacting him when he found out he was gay, there was still hope. In the end, Tetsuhiro took the bottle. He asked his friend what the drink was, but he couldn't tell him. In any case, the guy wasn't going to use it and hid the bottle. Suichi called his brother and told him not to do anything stupid because of the news from San Francisco. Kanako didn't know what he was talking about, but when he heard that same-sex marriage was legalized, he wanted to go there with his boyfriend. Suichi was furious and went to Tetsuhiro's house to relieve his stress. The drinks ran out quickly and he sent the guy to get more. He fell asleep, but Tetsuhiro went to the store anyway. The guy barely restrained himself due to his senpai's carelessness. He confessed his love to him a year ago. Suichi avoided him a bit at first, but eventually their relationship didn't change. Suichi actually never fully believed that declaration of love. He remembered how his brother had confessed his orientation to him. He didn't understand why he couldn't just be friends with that guy. Kanako said he wouldn't mind just being friends, but he couldn't help but accept Mitsugu's feelings since he liked him, and now he's even glad they started dating. Suichi couldn't wait for Tetsuhiro and started looking for something to drink. He found a hidden bottle and drank the contents. He didn't like the taste of it. The guy came back from the store and was shocked at what had happened. Senpai was acting normal and Tetsuhiro hoped his friend was just playing a prank on him. They went to bed and Suichi started to feel weird. He decided to go to the bathroom, but his legs stopped obeying him. Tetsuhiro woke up to the noise and reached out to the Senpai. Suichi pushed him away and asked him to go buy medicine for his stomach. Tetsuhiro said he had everything. Suichi tried to find a way to send him outside, but nothing worked. The guy tried to pick him up but the senpai fell on top of him. Suichi felt something strange because of the touching. Tetsuhiro finally realized what was going on. He understood that this chance wouldn't happen again and wanted to kiss him. Suichi tried to hit him but fell down without strength. The guy said it wasn't his fault and the senpai found that bottle on his own. Suichi got even angrier. He said that if that bottle was there, then Tetsuhiro was going to use it. The guy said it was just an accident and decided to help the senpai. I put what he was doing on Patreon. They kissed at the end. Tetsuhiro has known the senpai for five years and finally his fantasies have come true. He even thought he was asleep for a while. Suichi woke up and was furious, but he couldn't hit the guy because of what he did to his bumper yesterday. Tetsuhiro was not at all remorseful for what he had done and the senpai asked him to bring a knife from the kitchen. But since the guy refused, he used that unfortunate bottle. He missed but said he'd hit it next time. Tetsuhiro said that Suichi was to blame for everything that happened, since he knew how he felt and yet acted carelessly around him. The man said he just trusted him and the guy attacked him again. Suichi was able to fight back this time and went to the shower to wash away the shame and pain. Tetsuhiro was starting to regret a little bit what he had done. He got through to the senpai's sister and asked her to give him the phone. He said he'd continue researching until Soich's ass stopped hurting and he could go back to the university. After that, the guy won't appear in front of him again. Tetsuhiro also confessed his love to the man one more time and Suichi hung up. The guy applied for expulsion. After a week, Suichi was able to return to his studies. He was furious because Tetsuhiro had abandoned everything and made a revenge drink. But in a week, the guy never showed up to class. Suichi started to worry about him. He said he didn't want to see him, but he didn't forbid him to go to class. As it turned out, Tetsuhiro wanted to drop out, but he was persuaded to take a leave of absence. 
In the evening, Suichi came to his house, but no one was home for a long time. No one understood where the guy had disappeared. Sampai checked every day to see if he had returned home. He was angry that the guy stopped seeing his friends because of their fight. Suichi went to the extreme and got Tetsuhiro's family contacts, but his parents said they hadn't contacted him for years. Sampai hadn't realized until then how little he knew the guy. He began to miss him. Tetsuhiro had been gone for two weeks. Suichi thought about going to the police, but suddenly he heard about a body in the river. It turned out to be a mannequin. Suichi was angry at the guy because of what had happened, but he didn't want to cut all ties with him. He even began to blame himself for how cold and careless he had acted. He had never felt such a loss and almost gave up, but he finally saw the light in the guy's apartment. Tetsuhiro hadn't expected to see him. He traveled to his hometown, but didn't meet the family. And he wants to leave the university so the senpai won't hate him even more in the future. He only came back to pack his things. Suichi said he's only doing all this to blackmail him. The guy was surprised to hear that the senpai took his disappearance that way. The man started crying and told him how much he was worried about him. Tetsuhiro hugged him and apologized, then kissed him and piled him on the bed. He said he would never be able to hold himself together around the senpai. Then he threatened to drop out if the man pushed him away. I posted what they were doing on Patreon. For two weeks while Tetsuhiro was missing, he stayed at a friend's house. He asked the senpai if they were in love now, and Suichi said not to act gay.